Hey y'all, my name is Anna and I'm going to be talking about how to finesse your first year at UT Austin. I just finished my first year at UT Austin, so I'm going to be a sophomore this coming fall. And I thought I'd talk about a few things I wish I knew before, I guess, my first year at UT. So number one, before you register for a class, you want to make sure you have backups because there are a lot of kids at UT and classes are going to fill up and you won't be getting your first choice all the time, especially for like UGS classes, which is what you need to take um, your first year. When you're looking at your classes, make sure that you're looking for days and times that match up what you think you can do in a week. So, for example, you don't really want to sign up for an 8 a.m. class, especially like on the first day of the week um, because it's really hard to wake up early I promise you it's gonna be rough doing that every day and then they usually have either one hour classes or an hour and a half classes and so the hour classes are usually like more throughout the week like Monday Wednesday Friday the hour and a half classes are usually like Tuesdays and Thursdays and I promise you those classes are good because you don't have to take them on Friday sometimes but the only thing is they are a little longer so they seem like a really long class. For the location of classes, go to Google Maps or Apple Maps and make sure you like map between classes like how far it takes you to walk because the UT campus is really huge and I signed up for some classes that were like exactly 10 or 15 minutes apart from each other and there was this one class where I was like late to so I had to like get out of it and register for a new class. When you're signing up for classes you also want to keep in mind um, how many hours you're doing and I would say to do at least 12 to 16 hours. For me I had 16 hours my first year because I took about five classes and one of them was four credit hours and the rest were three so that made 16 but um, some of my roommates were taking 12 hours and I think that was those were four classes um, that were three hours each. If you really need to sign up for a class and you see that it is a little bit further away you could always ride your bike or use the scooters on campus. For scooters, you have to park them in a certain place, and I hear that there's not a lot of places to park the scooters on campus, so that's just something to keep in mind. When you're looking at class times, they they usually end like 10 minutes before that time, so if it said from 8 to 9 a.m., it that class would end at 8.50, and then you have basically 10 minutes to get to your next class. Something really important you need to do also for registering for classes is to look at look up the professor. Um, there's these sites just called like Rate My Professor and just look at what other students say about them and try to look at the ones that are most recent um, because I promise you certain professors um, can be really different from other ones and there may be easier classes than other classes based on the professor and look at, okay, also look at their syllabi too and see like how much percentage of things count account for the class like see if homeworks are more important than tests or if they drop the test um, and see if there's group projects required things like that so also there are some classes that are online um, or web-based same thing and they typically have like thousands of students that are a part of it and like for example government that's the one that I took um, because it's online and there are a lot of students I felt like the class was designed to basically like get rid of like the extra students in the class and so they made it pretty difficult for me but that's just something to keep in mind when you are signing up for an online class that's also like a required class for everyone to take. So next is books. You can look at this like maybe possibly on past syllabi. You want to try your best to see if the books that are required for that class are expensive and you want to try to see if you can, if you can get a hold of those before classes begin because if you wait to the last minute like me, sometimes they're already sold out and then you have to wait uh, for it to restock up or buy it online somewhere else and books are really expensive and if you want to try to save money, you can also try to find PDFs online or um, there's this place, there's this website called Libgen, something like that and you can find um, 
basically online books for free. And when you're registering for classes, it could possibly um, say that there's a waitlist and you could always be on the waitlist for a class. Um, I don't really like to do that because there's sometimes you can't get into it, but if you're really wanting to be in a class, you can wait list, be on the waitlist for it and you can see how many spots there are and what slot you are um, in case somebody in that class like decides to drop it and then you can be added into it. Next is living on campus or off campus. So for me, I decided to stay off campus my first year and I will continue to do that. Um, but basically the place that the dorm that I stayed in or off campus housing that I stayed in was off campus, but they're kind of on campus too because they're basically like right next to UT. I would say if you're living on campus, you have a little bit less freedom because um, you're not having to like sign in or sign out and have a curfew, I think maybe for some dorms. And when you're living off campus, you can basically decide what, like when you wanna go out or like if you wanna eat your own food or something like that. I heard that like living on campus, you can make a lot of friends easily. And I guess that is true because I didn't make that many friends off campus, like from my off campus housing. Um, so that, I guess that's like the only con for living off campus. And before you go to your first day of class, I would suggest, highly suggest, like walking to those classes and seeing like where everything is so that you're not lost on the first day and like panicking like me and I was late to class. Like, yeah, I was late. And then, so I would suggest going on Google Maps and just walking through it before. And also, even on the first day of school, people will be like using Google Maps because UT is a big campus, but I know a lot of people are like try to do it low key because it's kind of embarrassing to have like your phone out and like on Google Maps at UT, but everyone does it or most people do it. Okay, so it's the first day of class and I don't know how it will be this year because of the coronavirus, but usually on the first day of classes or the first week of school, there are a bunch of like tables, people tabling on Speedway, which is one of the popular streets on campus. And so there's a bunch of people tabling on the street, giving away free stuff. So there's, they're giving away free shirts and food and like, there's like student organizations and frats and sororities trying to get you to sign up or trying to get you to um, join them. And so you can really get a lot of cool free stuff on that first week of school. Okay, so I guess we're getting to the studying part or the academic part. And so once you start school, um, you will be getting maybe a substantial amount of homework probably. And so I like to have like my Google Calendar or a planner to write everything out and write like a week's worth of things that you have to do because if you don't, it'll probably be really hard to keep up with things because you will forget things. Like professors will not tell you like or, or remind you that something is due. Like you have to make sure that you are on top of your stuff because you won't like no one will remind you like this is college and it's different and you have to be responsible for yourself and no one's gonna like remind you things like in high school so there are a lots there are a lot of resources at UT that you can use in case like you're struggling make sure you're going to office hours um, to help with maybe homework or something you didn't understand in class like it sounds really um, scary I guess to do because I mean I I mean I'm not really that shy but like I was still shy to like talk to my professors or TAs for help because I just didn't I didn't know like how to socialize with them but I guarantee if you do that you they will help you so much on homework and like help you understand something because they're basically going to be like kind of explaining things better which is the answer to like your homework or test questions and if you also want something else to do to help you you could go to the Sanger Learning Center and that's a tutoring place where you can either have one-on-one -on -one tutoring or like a group tutor thing uh, which is like for walk-ins and so it's really helpful I suggest the one-on-one -on -one tutoring they do things for like physics and math and science English um, for writing and stuff like that. Oh, also, there's also the Writing Center, 
which helps you with like writing essays and you, you can also do like a one-on-one -on -one, um, mentor to help you with that. And then also I would suggest to have at least a friend in each class so that you're able to talk to them about certain assignments that you don't understand so that or in case you forgot something that was due you can call them and be like hey um, is this due tomorrow or I don't understand this do you you know um, and then also have like maybe groups of friends that you can meet in the in the PCL which is the biggest which is that big library on campus and a lot of people study there um, but yeah there's like rooms there that you can reserve and a bunch of your friends can um, study there or discuss things or do a practice um, presentation in some of the rooms there you just have to reserve them online and when you're with a group of friends let's say there's a group me that y'all have and I would be careful with being parts of those groups because sometimes um, people can be asking the whole group for answers and then people are just like spreading answers around and then you can kind of get in trouble if you can get in big trouble I mean if um, the professor somehow finds out about it or somebody snitches because that's ha that actually has happened before and basically what happened was a professor was added to it or he somehow got into it and then some students were talking bad about maybe the professor or the TA or passing around answers and then the whole class basically got were failed and even those that were part of the group me which weren't really talking or engaging in the group still failed because they're part of it and it was like considered cheating and so just be mindful of that so next is studying on campus and there's a bunch of places that you can study at i i might make a different video on that but the main place that you can study at is of course the pcl library and that's a huge library there's six floors and a bunch of places to sit but it can still get crowded because ut has a bunch of kids and you can print there check out books i don't think there's a limit Finding books at the PCL can be a little bit challenging. They have um, people, they have librarians to help you, and like a little guideline map, map thing to like sh sort of show you how to use it and find books. In classes, you can be confused and find yourself like, like totally confused and not knowing what's going on, and just like not understanding a concept. Like for me, it was calculus, and I was like looking around, and everyone looked like they knew what was like what, what the professor was discussing or teaching and I didn't understand it and I was like oh my god I'm so dumb and I'm like the only one that doesn't understand this but like I guarantee you there's a bunch of kids who don't know what's going on so don't worry about that like feeling like you're the only one and just get help and like ask questions and go to tutoring and that'll really help you because I passed calc 1 and calc 2 and I promise I did not know what was going on most of the time and I really thought I was gonna fail but I somehow passed okay so back to those student organizations and like um, frats and sororities that ask you to join them um, I would say um, it's really cool to like join those so that you can have a good experience and meet friends but for me I wasn't I didn't join any my first year because I was really busy like I was taking really hard classes but if you aren't taking time consuming classes, I guess it would be good for you to join those. Like I wish I did, but I just was so busy. Like I couldn't even do anything else that much um, because I was like grinding. And then that brings me to the next topic, which is work study and do it if you can. Like it's great to like make some extra money to pay for college and I heard that they don't make you put your work study money on your taxes, I believe. And so you get to keep all of that to use for whatever you want. And um, but I wasn't able to also because I could not balance like a job with my academics. And so I suggest you use your first year to like get to know what you can handle and how to manage your time before you sort of do all the crazy things you want to do in college. <laughs> I don't want you all to fail uh, because it's pretty difficult at UT. Then most importantly, I would say to not overdo, don't, don't overdo things. Like make sure you're getting enough sleep at night. Like 
my roommate and I were really good with that. We honestly were in bed like at 6 or 8 p.m. I'm not even joking. Make sure that you're getting enough sleep and you're eating because that's really important for your brain and to make sure you're doing well on quizzes and homework. I think I said most of the things I wanted to say and the most important things um, for finessing UT um, your first year and if you have any questions please ask them in the comments. If you have any other UT suggestions you'd like me to talk about that'd be great. So make sure you like, subscribe, and comment any questions. Thank you all for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video.